Hi, I'm Jeff Solferelli, and I'm a member of the San Leandro Historical Railway Society. I want to invite you to our location here in San Leandro at Orchard and Davis Street in Thrasher Park. Our design and our purpose for the San Leandro Historical Railway Society is preservation of this SP Depot, which is over 100 years old, for training and teaching of railway safety through Operation Lifesaver and running three model railroad layouts. We began uh, in 1973 uh, as a model railroad club uh, right here in San Leandro uh, in a hobby shop on Bancroft Avenue. About 1983, uh, the hobby shop closed and so the club had to find a new home. Uh, we were fortunate enough to find another hobby shop on uh, Park Street in Alameda and we built a second HO display in Alameda. That lasted about four years and then in 1987 that hobby shop closed and we again were looking for a new home. Here in San Leandro the city was renovating Thrasher Park where we are located today and uh, also at that time Southern Pacific Railroad was going to dispose of the San Leandro Depot uh, which is very close to the park here on the other side of the tracks. So all these things came together and we were able to procure the depot from Southern Pacific and at the same time the city of San Leandro gave us some property here in Thrasher Park uh, where we could relocate the depot. So we had the depot relocated and for the next three years we restored uh, the depot itself and started working on the HO display. As you can imagine, over so many years, uh, decades and decades, these walls got painted many, many multiple times in many colors. So we actually took um, every single plank that's on the wall here, removed them from the walls, ran them through a planer to remove the multiple layers of paint, and then reversed each plank and put it back up. So what we actually see here and what you see now is the reverse side of the original virgin redwood that was used to build the depot. And in fact, this entire depot is built of uh, virgin redwood. We have an old phone typewriter. Uh, this was the communications phone uh, that the uh, station master and ticket master uh, would use to communicate uh, to the other stations. There was, of course, the telegrapher. We all know that in those days, this is how the station masters and ticket masters would communicate with each other. And, of course, here were the controls uh, for what is commonly called uh, the semaphore that would notify the engineers of whether they had to stop at the station or not. We have spoken to over 22,000 students here uh, in San Leandro in the years that we have been doing uh, this outreach program. And uh, although we cannot absolutely definitively know what kind of impact it has, our view is if we have somehow prevented one fatality, um, the whole effort is worth it. Uh, if you're interested in Operation Lifesaver, or like a little more information, uh, go to oli.org and there's a lot of information about the organization. I'm Joe Barker and I'm going to say a few words about the construction of the HO display. Construction of the HO display started in 1990 and the HO display depicts the Southern Pacific route from the Oakland Alameda up over Donner, Donner Pass and on to Reno and Sparks. This is the famous route that was built by the Central Pacific Railroad in the 1860s to connect the first transcontinental railroad with the Union Pacific and they met at Promontory Point in uh, Utah. Our layout was designed by the famous uh, model railroad track plan designer, John Armstrong. John uh, drew this route for the club and it was built essentially to his plan. He published this plan in the 
uh, March 1998 issue of Model Railroader. And this is the article about the plan of our display. The display contains over 4,000 feet of track. It takes over 30 minutes for an HO train to travel around the display back to its original point. And it has several prominent features. One of the most prominent features of the display is our nine layer helix. The outer layer of the helix has a radius of 46 inches. The inner loop has a radius of 43 inches and the helix is over six feet tall. At the time it was built, the helix was supposedly the largest model railroad helix in the United States. When the layout was originally built, it was built using a DC analog system. I am sitting in a replica of a cab forward cab which was used as the control center for the entire layout when it was run by DC analog control. Behind me and on these control panels are the toggle block switches which are now just holes in the track diagram. In about 2000 the layout was converted to digital command control DCC and all of the block wiring was removed. This was one of the first club layouts in the United States to convert to digital command control. In the future, we will be replacing these panels with a computer touchscreen panels where we'll be able to use a touchscreen to control the entire railroad and throw all the switches. We have recently implemented using smartphones to control the digital command control system and our trains. Now I'd like to introduce you to Eugene who will take you on a tour of the layout by following an HO train. Welcome to the HO division of the San Leandro Historical Railroad Society. I'm Eugene Prakashik. We are going to follow this UP passenger train from our setup yard in Fairfield to our other setup yard in Sparks, Nevada. We're going to stop in places like Selby, Oleum, San Leandro, Roseville, Colfax, and Norden. Hope you enjoy our show. So now you're seeing the train going through the Selby and Oleum section. This is our interpretation. If you would really like to see this area, go and visit the Rodeo area because that's where you can go, especially Rodeo Park. Now you see the train traversing through San Leandro. Notice some of the buildings that are scratch built, like our Del Monte plant and the San Leandro Depot itself. So as you can see the train it turns around, it basically runs in a loop in San Leandro, and then you head through West Oakland.
Then as we go up the gray, we go passing Owen again and Selby. Onwards to Roosevelt. So now you see the train entering our mini helix. We go from our first level to our second level as a corkscrew. So right now we are going out of Selby now up to Dixon, to Sacramento, and eventually we will enter the Roseville Yard on the main. For all of you railroad fans out there, if you are familiar with the SP, any trains heading away from San Francisco are headed eastbound. So on our way coming up to Rosa, we're going to have a train coming towards us that is going to be headed towards the Bay Area, San Francisco area. Now you see the train entering the Antelope area. This is on the west end of Roseville. As you can see it going by the Antelope Depot and maintenance facilities. As you can see the two cranes. Now it is going past the ice facility. Now this was the ice facility back all the way up to probably 1960s, 70s, where fruit block trains, before they have mechanical rears, they have actual cars called reefers. We'll pull onto the track where you see this North, Norfolk Western, and they would dump ice in the cars to head east. See our new diesel facility where we have several diesels being sanded and maintained. This roundhouse was scratch built by one of our members, rebuilt it from the ground up. We'll also put in our laser index turntable and we can see now one engine going off the turntable going down to one of the service tracks. So as you see the train leaving Roseville, we are now proceeding up the Sierra foothills. As you notice, some of the towns, Rockland, Loomis, Newcastle, Auburn, Applegate, Landers. As the train traverses, then we come into the town of Colfax. Currently, our town of Colfax is not a representation of what's actually in Colfax. By the end of June, we should have a real good representation of Colfax. We're planning to install the actual depot and the freight depot and several other buildings in this area. headed east, we pass over the Long Ravine Bridge towards Cape Horn. 
Now, for some of you people that go to Reno, you go underneath the railroad bridge uh, past Colfax. This is our representation around the 1930s, 40s of what was actually there. Underneath was the Nevada County narrow gauge. Now, as you see the train traversing past Cape Horn, we enter to Emerson Gap area, where you see one of the many snow sheds that used to be up in the Donner Pass area. Now as you see the train leaving Immigrant Gap, we go through Yuba Pass. As we proceed through the snow shed that has been scratch built, we continue on eastward and go around one of our returning loops to head back down the railroad to our staging yard in Sparks. Up to 1985, there used to be a railroad town in the area of Norden. On our layout, we have a remnant of it known as the Cookhouse. If you look at John Signor's book, The Donner Pass Crossing, which is a really good book that I recommend, you can see pictures of the entire village. As you see the train traversing over the track that it just went to, it will go now to our hidden staging area that is through the Immigrant Gap uh, snowshed. Now we see the train going into our upstairs setup yard. This is where a lot of our trains terminate during our off sessions. Members come up here to set up and tear down their trains. And on the rail railroad, this would be Sparks, Nevada. So, hope that everyone enjoyed, and you all have a good day. I want to thank you for joining us for this tour of the San Leandro Historical Railway Society. If you have a passion for model railroads, be they O scale, G scale, or H O scale, come on down. We're always looking for new members to join our club. And by the way, you'll find us here in Thrasher Park at the Old Depot, corner of Orchard and Davis Street. You'll also be able to follow us on our website here listed on the screen. And so as we like to say, till then, all aboard and green signals ahead. <laughs>